Hello viewers and welcome to my first in-depth build video, this time featuring the 148 Hawker Hurricane. I would have wanted to do the Battle of Britain aircraft, however the kit produced by Airfix is almost impossible to find. So what I've done is I'm going to take the tropical version of the aircraft and with a few modifications and including parts in the kit, I'm going to change it into a Mark 1 Hurricane that would have been fighting during the Battle of Britain in August 1940. I also have the Edward Big Ed kit, as you can see here, with the flaps, masks, interior kit. And not only with those add-ons, I'm going to use soldering wire and some other little bits to make the aircraft more interesting. My first big tip for this build video is whenever you're using photo etch parts, I always go through and note on the instructions where those photo etch parts are going to come into play. That way there's no surprises and I'm not caught short further into the build. One of the reasons I chose to do the Hurricane as my first in-depth build on this channel is I'm a huge fan of aircraft that are considered an underdog, and the Hurricane fits that criteria perfectly. It's not the most beautiful looking aircraft, it wasn't fast, and it actually couldn't get to the same altitudes as the 109s it was trying to fight during the Battle of Britain. However, those shortcomings didn't hold it back during the battle because if it could bring the German 109 down into a turning fight, the Hurricane was actually able to outturn it. When building this kit from Airfix, you will have to watch out for your alignment when you're setting up the cross members and the wing spars here on the aircraft because failure to line it up here properly, following the instructions to the 90 degrees, is going to lead to more issues down the road when you're not able to close the wings and even have issues getting the fuselage on. When you're building this model and you're using the Edward parts, one thing you may find easier is if you glue this hydraulic tank in place first and then attach the hydraulic straps. I built this model before with the same parts and glued the strap in place beforehand and it was almost impossible to get that tank to sit flush. This is a critical part of the build right here. You want to make sure these wing spires are sitting properly in those grooves or else you're going to run into issues when you're trying to fit the top halves of the wings.
Airfix has done a great job adding the detail here to the cockpit assembly. However, it's missing a few details, and these are some things that any modeler of any skill level can do. Just simply grab some soldering wire or copper wire even, and just attach it in place with super glue. One of the advantages that the Hurricane has over the Spitfire is the Hurricane was built around a frame assembly made of tubes which gave it great strength and made it a rugged aircraft, whereas the Spitfire had a monocoque assembly and if it was hit it was actually took longer to repair, whereas the Hurricane could be repaired on the airfield by the fitters. Airfix has given you the option of building your gun base open or closed, however building them open does provide some challenges. One of those being that in order to paint it properly you'll have to paint it in sections. So what I've done here is I've actually written the part number on the back of the piece prior to painting. That way I don't lose track of what is what. Now that I've primed the photo etch parts made of brass and the plastic with Mr. Surfacer 1200, I finally get to see some color as I spray Model Master's aluminum acrylic paint in place. And again, I'm doing this beforehand just because it's easier than trying to paint everything with the guns in place.
here I'm pre-bending some s copper wire to be used uh, in place of the airlines that are actually used to fire the Browning 303s on the Hurricane. These parts are not included in the kit, so this just adds some more eye candy to the gun. <laughs> If you're choosing to open the gun bays on this kit, Airfix has set up a line on the inside of the wing and outside as a guide. However, you're going to want to take off a little bit at a time and then use a file to clean up your edges afterwards. That way you don't run the risk of damaging the wings or cutting too much off. I'm almost ready to install my instrument panel here, but first I'm adding glass to the dials using Tamiya Clear. things I like about this Airfix kit is that they've done a great job recreating the look of the canvas stretched over the rear half of the fuselage. Although the Royal Canadian Air Force did not have any squadrons in England during the Battle of Britain, 
Canadians were actively flying and fighting in the famous 242 All-Canadian Squadron, led by none other than Douglas Bader. Bader had lost both of his legs in a flying accident in 1931, but had returned to the RAF to fly just before the outbreak of hostilities. Some highlights of Douglas Bader's career were coming up with the big wing idea with Lee Mallory in order to bring up a wing of aircraft during the Battle of Britain. Bader would continue on frontline service until being shot down and bailing out of his aircraft in 1941 and becoming a prisoner of war. However, having fake legs didn't slow him down as he escaped numerous times and was later moved to the famous Colditz Castle. The number one Royal Canadian Air Force squadron finally stood up on August 17th of 1940 when their hurricanes were finally brought up to the British standards for the battle. Number one squadron would distinguish itself with three Canadian pilots being awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, but 23 Canadians would lose their lives during the Battle of Britain. In 1941, Number 1 Squadron would become 401 Squadron to give themselves a Canadian identity and trade their Hurricanes for Spitfires. You can find them today flying the CF-18 Hornet. considered outclassed by the BF-109 during the Battle of Britain, it inflicted nearly 60% of the Luftwaffe losses during the fighting. It also continued fighting during World War II in all major theaters of conflict. This is the Rosie the Riveter tool in 148 scale, and after my airbrush, it's probably the best tool I've ever invested in. It brings so much more detail to all of my models that I couldn't imagine doing them without it. I'm now doing what's called marble coating on the bottom of the aircraft. Instead of pre-shading, which I find is too uniform as sometimes, you basically take thin white paint and you draw random squiggled lines of various thicknesses, just so that's going to allow some tonal differences to shine through on the paint. It's a little more realistic in my opinion, and on the bottom of the hurricane should fit nicely. In this clip, you can see that I've completed the marble coating and the different shades in different areas on the bottom of the wings. They're not very uniform. And what you'll do now is apply thin layers of paint 
at about 90% thinner to 10% paint, and you'll add thin coats that'll slowly cover that marble coating until you're happy with how it looks. With the Hawker Hurricane defending the skies over England to stave off German invasion, the RAF could only afford to send four Hurricanes to defend the island of Malta as the Italians joined the war. The Hurricanes bore the brunt of the fighting and over the skies of Malta as they faced over 200 aircraft as the battle kicked off. It was during the fighting over Malta though when the Hurricane was finally removed from frontline service as it was dangerously outclassed by the new German 109F models. It was finally removed to a ground attack role where it spent the remainder of the war. Here I'm using my wife's cricket machine to create custom masks for the 242 Squadron markings. After the Battle of Britain, with Spitfires now being available in larger numbers, the Hawker Hurricane was transferred to the Royal Navy where it was served as a catapult aircraft to be launched off merchant ships to attack German bombers tracking the convoys.
One famous Canadian who flew with the Royal Air Force during the Battle of Britain was none other than Flying Officer William McKnight from Calgary, Alberta. He joined the Royal Air Force in 1938 after he had a falling out with his girlfriend. He was a troublemaker initially with the RAF, twice being confined to barracks and even once held in open arrest for, quote, being a perpetrator of a riot. McKnight must have been doing something right in the air, though, as he was credited with 18 victories and was Bader's preferred wingman. McKnight survived the Battle of France and the Battle of Britain, but was shot down early in January of 1941. He is the fourth highest scoring Canadian fighter pilot of the Canadian Second World War. Here I'm using a silver watercolor pencil just to scratch up the latches that would hold the engine covers in place. The ground crews during the Battle of Britain could actually turn their fighters around in as little as four minutes and have them rearmed and refueled and ready to fight the next wave of German aircraft. During his production run, over 14,500 Hawker Hurricanes were produced, with over 1,400 being produced in Canada. Supervising hurricane production was Canada's first female aeronautical engineer, Elsie McGill. For weathering access panels and the lower part of the landing gear covers, I'm using two different shades of oil color paints. Once these are dry, I will use enamel thinner to actually blend them a little bit and reduce the intensity of the color. If you're a history buff and want to learn more about the Hawker Hurricane, a book I highly recommend is Tom Neal's Gun Button to Fire, written by a pilot who fought during the Battle of Britain. After an aircraft is rearmed and the guns cleaned, crews would put tape over the muzzles to keep dust and debris from entering the barrels and jamming the guns. That wraps up my first extended build video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up and click subscribe. If you didn't like it, leave a comment and tell me why. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.